Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of the Podiatry Legends podcast, podcast designed to help you feel, see, and think differently about the podiatry profession. My guest with me today, you're probably going to recognize the name. His name is Todd Brennan. He has been on twice before, once with his beautiful wife, Leslie, and it was episode 111, and it was called The Footprint Hunt. It was all based on a book that they wrote together for children. So go and check that out on Amazon. And Tob was also on with his business partner back, way back on episode 21. I've got it written down so I wouldn't forget. And it was all about being YouTube legends because these guys created YouTube videos that get hundreds of thousands of views. Not just 100. If I got 100 views on a video, I'm like air punching. They get hundreds of thousands of views on their YouTube videos. So Leo Krowitz was his partner. And unfortunately, Leo passed away a few months ago. So I wanted to get Todd back on, not just to talk about that, which is, it just, it shocked me when I saw it, and I'm sure it shocked everybody. But we want to talk about partnerships. And, and sometimes when key people in a partnership, whether they leave or they pass away, I think it's just a really important subject. So, so Todd, thanks for coming on and uh, and and wanting to talk about this. I think it's really important. Yeah. Thanks for having me as always. It's, um, yeah, it's, it was a shock. Sure. And, and I'd say for you, like it was a shock for me just knowing Leo through the podcast mm -hmm. and watching what you guys were doing, but I suppose someone who lived and worked with him for a number of years, um, what was the circumstances around all that? Um, yeah, it was, we like, so it was a Wednesday I worked with them and we worked and, you know, went out to lunch and everything, um, seemed great, seemed fine, seemed like normal Leo. And then, um, you know, Thursday morning around six o'clock ish, you know, a little earlier, my phone rang and it was his wife. So I just figured she was calling to say, you know, he didn't feel well, he wasn't going to make it in, whatever. Okay. That's fine. Well, when I picked up, she told me that he had passed away last night. And I was just, I, like you said, I, I couldn't wrap my head around it. And, you know, I just went into like full panic mode. And, you know, thank God for my wife who you know was able to kind of comfort me. And then it was just a matter of um, just setting my mind straight and putting things in order and making sure the practice obviously kept functioning and, and working, um, but just making sure I got my ducks in a row. And, and it wasn't it wasn't easy at first because my mind was in a million different directions on what needed to be done. Yeah. So, cause Leo was only 53, I think. 53. Yeah. Yeah. So, which I'm 54 myself. So yeah. when you hear someone 53 passing away, it um, scares the shit out of you. Sure. It makes you, oh. makes you realize things can happen unexpectedly at any time. And you sort of hope that doesn't. Right. So, right. Your initial reaction, of course, would have been shock, mm -hmm. but it was also one of those things probably thinking, yeah, what would Leo want me to be doing? Right, right. <laughs> he wouldn't yeah, want me just throwing exactly. to go, I'll cancel the day. It's just the business right. was so important to him as well. For sure. Yeah, it was tough. You know, I went into the office that day and I had a couple of post-op patients that I, I wanted to see in the morning. Um, so I saw them and then I had my staff basically move the, re the patients for the rest of the day over to the other doctor's schedules. Um, just because I knew one, I wasn't going to be in the right frame of mind to per se see patients all day, but two, you know, I needed to like sit down and, and look at everything and, and make sure I had a grasp of everything that was going to be unfolding ahead of me basically. So, um, you know, that's kind of the, the route I took for that first day, basically. Yeah. So how long had you worked with Leo uh, prior to all this? Um, seven so did years. You, did you, you meet him at, when you were doing your residency? Uh, yeah. When I finished my residency, um, he had just started looking for an associate. And I was introduced to him via a couple other podiatrists. And we met we kind of our personalities clicked, hit it off. And, you know, he hired me and I was with him for three years as an associate. And then um, after my contract was up, you know, I bought in and became partner. Yeah. And then, you know, that was for the last four years, basically. So you've been in partnership together for four years. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and, and, I, and I could tell when you were on on episode 21 together, you guys got on really, really well. Oh, and yeah, I remember when sure. I was sending you shirts and I said, I need your shirt sizes. And mm-hmm. then I think Leo said, oh, I need a small. And then right. you said, no, I want mine in human size. Right. And, <laughs> and he laughed. Funny. So I actually told that story uh, during his, his service. I spoke and I actually, I actually told him that story as far as a way to um, describe our, our kind of relationship back and forth. So yeah, that was, it was really funny. It was, um, but yeah, you could just tell you had this really good working relationship. So when you, you worked for him first and then you mm-hmm. decided to become his partner, mm-hmm. your business partner, what was it you, what was it you looked for? when you were thinking about it or what was it that made you decide, yes, this would be a good partnership? Um, I think there was a couple of things. One, obviously from the financial standpoint, I needed to make sure it made sense for my, myself and my family, you know, that um, I wasn't actually going to end up making less money by buying in and paying that, that buy-in back. Um, But also I think just the uh, longevity of being in the practice and knowing that, you know, I planted my roots and that, you know, you know, something catastrophic happening, which is ironic now to say that the practice would still kind of be functioning and and being successful as, as it was. So those were a couple of things I looked into and then just determining whether did I just want to be an associate and and not take on the um, ownership role of things. And, you know, I think to a degree, I think most people, always have that thought and that dream of being an owner of a practice. Um, and then as you start working through it, you know, that may change a little bit to determine whether you truly want it or not, but you know, that's yeah. kind of how it felt. So are you the outright owner now or are there other yeah, partners? So we're, um, we're finishing out the final buyouts from his wife for his yeah. stock option. So um, that should be done within the next couple of days. So then I'll, yeah, I'll be primary owner. Two of the other associates we've actually already talked to and met with before his passing about buying in. So there's going to be two more that will be um, most likely becoming partners, uh, I'd say, probably by the new year. Okay. So when yeah. you guys went into partnership, did you have things in place that if something catastrophic happened, had you thought mm-hmm. about if somebody, if one of you has got injured or, or passed away or that wasn't really... Because I suppose you, yeah, like you're not very old either. How old are you? I'm 36. Yeah, well, yeah, I can almost remember when I was 36. <laughs> um, so, like you being 36 and Leo only being 53, was it something right. you discussed? Yeah, so it was interesting because there's like buy sell options and in life insurance policies and stuff like that that I know practices will take out for instances like this. But unfortunately, due to previous health issues, Leo wasn't privy to get that kind of stuff. So basically we had to, um, contractually, it was written in our contract that basically said, God forbid one of us pass away. Basically the other is, has the right to be, to basically buy out that portion and that money will go to the spouse. So okay. in essence, it was a way that was worded and set up from a financial standpoint that, you know, the spouse and their children will still, you know, get the get the perks, if you will, of, of the success of the practice. Okay. In hindsight now, is there anything you would have changed in the agreement or you wish you probably had to have put a bit more thought into or it um, pretty well ran pretty smoothly? Yeah. I mean, I think overall things ran pretty smoothly. I mean, I got the buy sell thing. I mean, that was something that I'm learning more about now. Yeah. So I think in retrospect, looking back, knowing more about that would have been helpful and looking into that more. And I know with the other two guys that are going to be buying in here probably shortly, that's certainly something that we'll look into because not only does it make it easier, but it also decreases the financial burden of them when they buy in. Um, It's basically like a payout, if you will. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. And you did mention, so Leo had, did he have some health issues beforehand? Well, he did. Yeah. He had things that were going on that, you know, that were, I think, under control yeah. and from my understanding that we're under control um and not the, that i wanted to pry into his, no, no, no. his health yeah i mean so yeah like he that. had some stuff that that was that was there that was from my understanding under control but i also think that there's a possibility that they were maybe more serious than he thought 
Okay. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of the extent of what I know. Yeah. Now, the only reason I bring that up is just because, because we're talking about partnerships on this particular sure. episode and yeah, and partnerships can break down or end for particular reasons. But I think it's really important for people going into partnerships that I, sometimes I think we think about the health aspect mm. of the person we're going into partnership with. Sure. But I think that's really important that you were aware that he, there were some yeah, medical issues there. Right. Whereas I'm sure some people go into partnership with, and it's usually too, it'll, it may be someone younger who's, who's going into partnership with someone older who's owned the practice longer. Correct. I think it's probably important that they're very open health wise or about mm -hmm. their own health. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, you're, I mean, the, the terminology says it all, you're in a partnership. It's like a marriage, you know, Yeah. and you know, you, you want to know what you're getting yourself into. And, you know, I, I knew to a degree, I don't, maybe I just didn't know the severity of it. Um, nor did I think, you know, sudden things would happen and, you know, you never want to think about that stuff, but unfortunately that's where you kind of separate, you know, the, the, the emotional mental stuff from the business stuff because the business stuff is still something that's going to carry on regardless of if the person's there or not. Yeah. So going into partnership, um, so far it sounds like everything was rosy and perfect. Were there any learning curves going into that partnership? You sort of went, Oh, I didn't see that coming or things that people that are considering going into partnership that they should probably think about. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just like the, the management of a business, right. And it's, you kind of learn it on the fly and you learn to um, put every decision or everything you're told or bill you're given or whatever it is under a microscope to see, do, do I really have to pay this? Or was this already paid? Or is this necessary? Or, you know, things like that. And, and just really questioning things instead of just saying, you know, somebody says, Hey, we need to do this. Okay. Well, you know, go ahead and do it. Yeah. So I think that, that that was a, you know, really looking stuff under a microscope and a fine tune cone to make sure. Um, and then just budgeting stuff, you know, I think it, luckily I'm kind of the bill person at our, in, for our personal finances. So I have a good feel for that. So doing that for the, the practice wasn't, it's just on a bigger scale, basically, you know. So when you were talking about the things that whether you had to pay for or not, was this as you're going into the partnership saying, was this already paid for or wasn't it paid for? And do I have to pay it or should that have been paid prior? Yeah, no, I mean, most of that. So the, the payout was, you know, figured out the cost of the practice and the debt that was there and subtracting it and doing all that. That was all pretty much done after the buy-in. Yeah. I guess the stuff I'm talking about is after I bought in, it's just, you know, your office manager comes and says, hey, you know, the chair in room two broke, we need a new chair. So then it's saying, all right, well, do I need to spend $6,000 on a chair or is it just a remote that's $100? Okay. You know, and that's, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, you have to look at closely. You don't, it sounds bad, but you don't necessarily want to trust what they tell you right away. You really want to <laughs> figure it out <laughs> first. I remember having a, uh, uh, my IT person and I had mm -hmm. them come in and actually do a talk to our staff. Uh -huh. And he said that, you know, sometimes your, your front reception per person at the front desk, the computer, or they can't get on the internet. So all of a sudden they'd be ringing up the IT people saying, oh, the internet's down. Right. And they go, right. is the internet down or is it just you can't connect on your computer? Go and right. have a look on the and so he took me through these steps uh, exactly. to narrow it down to specifically what is the problem. He said, because that could be the difference between us coming out there and charging you a couple of hundred dollars mm -hmm. or us telling you to turn it off and turn it back on again. For sure. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> yeah, they'll come in. I, I think we need a new computer for so and so's desk. Well, why? What's wrong with it? Well, it's not turning on. All right. Well, is it plugged in? Did you try to check the battery? You know. Did you like just you're right? You can go through that stepwise approach, and it sounds stupid to say it, and it doesn't. I, I, you don't want it to come off as demeaning towards that individual, but at the same token, if you're footing the bill, you want to make sure that everything's checked before you buy something. Yeah, and it may sound like some people like listen to this and go, "Well, that's just common sense." Is it plugged in? Common right. sense is not very common sometimes. It's not. It's not. And it'd be funny, we had a, a, a Red Bull fridge that I got outside here in um, our barbecue area. Mm -hmm. And some days it'd work, some days it wouldn't. And we, we had, it was given to us for free and we thought, oh, it's probably just buggered, let's just get rid of it. And it was the same thing. As we were taking it out, we didn't realize that the cable that came into the fridge, we thought it was hardwired, but mm -hmm. 
but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It was just a plug-in underneath a little <laughs> bracket. Right. So then as I'm moving out, all of a sudden I went, hang on. So I've plugged it back in, worked perfectly. <laughs> so here we were about to, I could have said to someone, just get rid of the fridge because it's not working, assuming it right. was hardwired and mm-hmm. it was given to us for nothing. And uh, yeah, three years later, we've still got it sitting there and it still works. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's amazing. The, the simplest things sometimes uh, can be overlooked. Now, I've, I've been in a couple of partnerships myself with different people. Mm-hmm. One's, one was great. One uh, ended up being a bit of a bit of a mess. Mm-hmm. Um, the one that was messy was I went into partnership with a particular person, but then that person sort of got married, and even, and I went to partnership with him, not with her. But then once right. they got married, things started to change a little bit. Sure. So, how did how did you and Leo's partner and yeah you and Leslie did did you guys all get on? Was was that always mutual, or did you bang heads every now and then? No, not really. So, it was, you know, Leo and I got along really well. And, and if something would come up with staff or, you know, we would want outsider's point of view, we would ask Leslie or Lisa, his wife. Yeah. And, um, you know, we would hear the, <laughs> we always joke that the harsh reality of what we should be doing versus what we're actually doing. Right. Because they would just be like, well, just fire the person or whatever <laughs> it may be. Right. And <laughs> we would say, well, that's not realistic. We can't just jump to that conclusion. Right. So we would always joke that we would be hearing the same thing from both of our wives That's um, funny. when it came to it. But yeah, we got along. I mean, we, the four of us would go out to dinner and, you know, we got along really well. Neither one of them, you know, had any influence or, you know, dabbled in the practice at all. So it was, it was nice from that standpoint. That's right. Yeah. Cause Leslie works for the VA hospital. So she Correct, didn't yeah. work actually in the practice. Right. And, and what did Leo's wife do? She, she wasn't, she, she had her nursing license, but she did um, like interior design and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So it's good. So they were both outside of the practice. So it was really you guys that were controlling everything. And then you would go home, you would tell the problems and both your wives would say the same thing. Sack them. Pretty much. The the worst, (laughs) the, the biggest issue we had was when we redid one of our practices, like the paint and the furniture. Yeah, that's where we would because you know with Leo's wife being like into your designer and her and her business partner, you'd be like, well, you need this paint, and Leo and I look at each other and be like, this paint is awful, it's ugly, and they're like, it doesn't go with this furniture, and I'm just like, oh my god, I, I don't just paint it whatever, I don't even care, just tell me what room I need to see a patient, and you can do whatever else. So yeah, it's funny when we moved my practice from one place and then we bought our own building, mm-hmm. and my wife said to me. I'm getting an interior decorator to come in. I'm going to talk to them. We need to just revamp everything. You know, all the colors that you've been using, they were good in right. the, in the, in the noughties, but they're no good uh-huh. now. Right. <laughs> you need uh-huh. to change it. And I, sure. I kicked up a bit of a stink uh, sure. for a while there, but then they all ganged up on me <laughs> and eventually I said, fine, just do it, do it your way. Yeah. All just right. do it right. your way. And then I'll tell you how bad it is afterwards. And anyway, <laughs> it, it was, it was beautiful. That what they came up with was so much better. And then that was the color theme that I continued on, not just with through and practice, but uh, all the other stuff that I do now, I, ju- I just use this particular red color, this gray color sure. and these shades of gray. So yeah, sometimes it's best to just let the experts do what they do That's best. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So you mentioned your role, you looked after the billing side of things in the practice. Was that right? No, so uh, so I actually dealt with more of like the um, the staff stuff, you know, payroll. Uh, dealt with any staff problems, um, you know, marketing, like all that kind of stuff. Leo did most of the the billing and or not billing, but like the the budget stuff, you know. Okay. Um, so that was that was definitely a huge. I was aware of it, right? You know, and I knew where bills are having to be paid and whatnot, but to have that huge, huge thing dropped on my shoulders too, was, it was a huge uh, stressor for me at the time, for sure. Cause I was going to say, so going into the partnership, you sat down and you worked out to find roles on who was going to, to do which, which areas of the business. Basically. Yeah. We just kind of, I don't even know if it was ever, you know, put, you know, in stone we just kind of figured it out as we went and, you know, if you need me to do something, you'd text me or call me and I would do it or vice versa. So it was very give and take from that standpoint, but, you know, primarily he did bills. I did employee stuff, marketing stuff, um, basically. 
who did the hiring and firing? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> other, than your, other than your other than your other than your wives, right? So funny story. Literally, like one of my first days, I had to fire somebody. Like first day as an employee, I wasn't even a, a, a partner yet. Yeah. And this lady came in, and you know she was a wreck, and she was having a bad day. And I told her, I said, "Just go home. You're not going to do any good staying here. You're you're in tears about something. Just go home." And she told me, she said, are you sending me home? And I said, yeah, you, you don't need to be here crying with patients coming in. And she's like, fine, I'm leaving. Tell Dr. Krawitz I'm never coming back. And she slammed the door and I was like, Whoops. I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> so that was the only person. Well, not the only person. That was, that was the first fire that I had to do. The other ones, um, primarily Leo did, I would say. But we only had to think of one other person or two other people, actually. Yeah, my, my brother is a dentist and he was in partnership Oh, when he first graduated, I think went and worked somewhere. And then I think he was in Wyala and he was buying into the practice. And they said, your role is you are going to do the hiring and firing. That's going to be one of your <laughs> roles. He went, Fine. So about six weeks in the business owner, his partner, his wife works at the practice and he sacked her. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course you could understand that caused a few hassles. And my brother said, and they said, well, why did you sack my wife? He said, well, I've been going through the credit card statements and she's been putting cigarettes and all these other stuff onto uh, the bill at the petrol station. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I told her to stop doing it and she just kept doing it. So I just had to let her go. And, <laughs> oh, geez, it just, said, it just caused, caused a shit fest. I'm sure. I'm sure. That's really funny. <laughs> so, but I, I do think it's important when partnerships come together that you are given certain roles and sure. sometimes you need, if that's your role, you need to be able to make the decision if that is your role. And the other person probably has to just live with it. Right. No, it's, it's true. And luckily, you know, we, we had those roles, but, you know, we would also, something happened, we'd talk to each other and be like, is, is employee X worth giving another shot or have they, you know, done enough to where we said we need to move on from them? And usually what we would do is whoever was working with that employee for the day, would talk to them, but the other person, we would actually FaceTime into them. So we were still there or be on yeah. the phone. So it was kind of a dual thing. Yeah. I remember I had a, I came home one day and I said to my wife, Oh, such and such has resigned. Mm -hmm. she went, wow. That's that surprised me being with this for so many years. I went, yep. Just like that resigned. Anyway, my wife worked with me at the practice. So she was there the next day and I wasn't, she came home that day and she said, can we just talk about thing of resigning again? I said, yeah. She took me through the conversation. I said, well, I was there. And she came up to me and said, do you know that I could get paid so much more money in so many other places? And I, and I said to her, fine, I accept your resignation. And I walked out. <laughs> and, <laughs> and my wife goes, that's not really resigning. I went, well, I took it that she could get paid so much more money in so many other places that that's right. what she was basically saying. So, yeah, sure. I, was, I was terrible at doing that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's never fun. And, and I didn't, I always felt too, I, I never minded someone coming and asking for a pay rise or you know, reduction hours, whatever it was. But if you wanted a pay rise, tell me what more you were going to do for my practice. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I want this, I want to be paid this amount of money. Well, that's great. But what, what extra are you going to do for me to pay you that extra amount of money or what other service can we introduce that can uh, warrant you being paid that extra mm -hmm. money? Right. Yeah. And sometimes, unfortunately, they don't always see the, the business side of things and, and the way things work to understand it's not just as easy as here's an extra dollar or whatever, you know? Yeah. So now that, now that you're running the practice yourself and you've had to take over some of Leo's roles, do you appreciate more of some of the things he may have done that you are unaware of? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the budgeting thing was definitely pretty hard, especially for, a, you know, a big practice. Um, so it definitely took me time, I, you know, we're three months in now and I feel like I have a pretty good grasp about it, about bills going and coming money coming in, um, and just managing it. I would say I probably run a tighter financial ship than Leo did from the yeah. standpoint of, you know, spending and whatnot. Um, but I think that some of it is just our, our personal mindsets and like, you know, uh, as far as finances go, I guess, you know. So with uh, how many, how many podiatrists are in your practice currently? Five, five, including myself. Okay. And they're, they're all involved in doing the videos. 
Uh, they are. I mean, there's t- two to three of us probably are, are do it mostly. The other two, Brittany uh, is our newest one. She's still learning the ropes and like still kind of um, nervous a little bit on video. Um, so as, we all are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as we all are. As we all I don't think very few people, I think, other than my daughter who is 16, that uh-huh. is naturally comfortable just you know talking in front of a camera. And I think younger people too with sure. the Snapchat and TikTok, TikTok, <laughs> you know, all the different uh, social media uh-huh. platforms where they're doing videos, I think younger people coming through are a little bit more confident. Mm-hmm. They're just growing up in front of the camera, you know. Yeah, yeah. Whereas for me, that was never natural. It was something I right. real. I mean, uh, yeah. One of our most popular videos was me doing strapping on someone's heel, mm-hmm. and the whole video you can't you only really see me from the shoulders down, right? Because I just did not want to be in the video. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So now, it's, it's and, and now we're shooting, doing this podcast. I'm saying, hey, can I record the video? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, and releasing the video as well. Yeah, so, you've come a long way. <laughs> so you've got five podiatrists there. Uh, how many support staff? Um, I think we have about twenty. Oh wow! Okay, so it's a it's a fairly decent size. Yeah, yeah. And and this is the one pra- you got one practice. And I just tell people the name, but they want to go and check it out. Healthy Feet Podiatry, Tampa, Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's the other. We you would kind of go by two different names. There's Healthy Feet Podiatry and Advanced Podiatry. Advanced Podiatry was the practice that we bought when that podiatrist was retiring, so we bought that practice out. Okay. So for the sake of marketing and online accessibility, it was just easier to keep both of the names. So our Healthy Feet's actual name is Advanced Podiatry. We just do business as Healthy Feet Podiatry because Advanced Podiatry was taken as a name of a practice already, which is the practice we actually ended up buying. So it's, it kind of all worked out oddly enough. But yeah, so we have two different, we have uh, Healthy Feet Podiatry is kind of what we're known for, but Advanced Podiatry is that, you know, subtitle of the name. Okay, and but it's still just the one location. Did you buy the other practice and amalgamate it into your current practice? No, no. So we have four locations. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was four. Yeah. Jeez, yeah, I've done my yeah, homework, we... haven't I? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we have we have four locations. So um, we had, when I started with Leo, we only had two. And that was part of the partnership idea was we both wanted to grow the, grow the practice. Yeah. And then that's when the, the other office, the guy was retiring. So we bought that practice out and inherited two podiatrists. So then we had three practices, four podiatrists, and then... A year, no, two years later, we opened our fourth office, hired my brother. So then we had six of us now. Oh, is your brother a podiatrist as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Younger? Yep. Younger or younger. older? Yeah, younger, four years younger. Okay. So he has to listen to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> boss. <laughs> older brother um, and boss. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, we have four offices, five docs now. And your brother's still with you? Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, what, what, of, yeah. No, he's one of the ones that's up for buying in for partnership. I was actually going to ask that. Um, what, what is it like working with your brother uh, in, the, in actually, the same profession? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we get along great. You know, we work together one day a week right now. Um, and we get along really well. The staff loves working with us because, you know, we're busting each other's chops all day. We play tricks on the staff, you know, you name it. We just have fun. And, um, he is, he's like our main surgeon at the office. He does, you name it, he does it from ankle replacements to crazy midfoot, hind foot fusions. He does it all. So, you know, I, I trust in him a lot, you know, bigger surgical cases I don't want to do. I pass to him. I'll confide in him in cases I might schedule, whatever it may be. Yeah. So he, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's been great to work with him. Like you're, you're pretty chilled out and laid back. Mm-hmm. Is he similar to you or is he a bit more, wiry jumping around yahooing high-fiving no no he's he's pretty laid back too yeah he's he's pretty laid back we our personality might be a little different from you know if you have that one patient that wants to ask you 10 million questions i may be more open to just sitting there and hearing them out and going through it whereas he's just going to be like all right i gotta go you know and just kind of cut <laughs> it short and, <laughs> and take off you know he, he's a little bit more blunt with with certain things but um other than that, yeah, I'd say we're both pretty laid back, easy going. 
Okay. So yeah, well, I was unaware that you had actually had the four locations and they're yeah. all, all in Tampa. How far apart are they? So um, we have one in Brooksville, which from like, we'll say our home base in North Tampa is probably about 40 miles North. Okay. And then we have one in Wesley Chapel. That's about 12 to 15 miles north of North Tampa. So it's between North Tampa and, and Brooksville. Yeah. And then we have our South Tampa location, which is down towards Tampa, like the city of Tampa. So if you look at a map of Florida, of Tampa, we kind of have four locations that almost draw a straight line throughout Tampa from South to North. The distance between the most Northern and Southern is probably about an hour. Okay. So drive. is the plan to keep growing or just improve upon what you've already got? Yeah. So with right now, you know, Leo and I, prior to him passing, we're talking about expansion again. Um, but, you know, right now with everything, the goal is to kind of fine tune what we have, get the other guys who are interested buy in and then potentially start looking at um, more, you know, growth basically. Okay. So we've been talking about partnerships. If somebody was listening to this and they're thinking of maybe buying into an existing practice, what, what are some of the things you would tell them to look for? So, you know, obviously you want to look at the, the spreadsheets and the numbers and see that there's been some type of growth with the practice. And, you know, it's important. And I think Leo and I always said that, you know, if we weren't working on something or doing something, it was kind of stagnant, you know, so you want to see that there's going to be some room for growth or else, you know, from a financial standpoint, you're going to, you're going to level out at something eventually if there's not, you know, growth to the practice and expansion. Um, and the other thing is just the people you work with, you need to make sure you get along with them or else it'll be miserable, you know? And yeah. I think that's something Leo and I, you know, as you alluded to, we got along well, you, we might not have agreed on everything, but our, our personalities were such that we would pick and choose our battles. If there was something that I was passionate about and I wanted to do, he'd be all for it and vice versa, you know? So I think that that's really big because it's, it's a marriage and it's not just the marriage, you know, from a working standpoint, but it's, it's your livelihood. If it doesn't work and it fails, then, you know, there goes your, your, your money line. <laughs> yeah. And one important thing you said then too, was uh, looking at the spreadsheets. Yeah. Right. Looking at the figures and there's been this constant, yeah, a steady growth over a number right. of years. Cause I have heard some stories where, uh, and this is probably not, I haven't heard this in podiatry, but my brother had mentioned this in dentistry where sometimes someone's thinking, oh, I'm going to sell my practice or sell part of my practice. Uh -huh. So they overinflate the figures by pumping a whole pile of money into marketing to make the, the figures just jump up. But then they don't, okay. they pay all the marketing money through a separate credit card that they're paying for privately. Sure. So that it doesn't appear on the books that all of a sudden they spent all this, this money just looks like there's, right. all of a sudden there's this rapid growth and they're trying to right. get people to buy at the peak. Mm -hmm. So I like what you said about just looking for steady growth over a number of years, right? which I, I think is, is more important than all of a sudden massive growth. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, you gotta, you know, if you're looking at a pie and there's going to be potentially more people buying in, if you're stuck at X number and that's not moving, and more people keep buying in, well, eventually your number is going to keep going down because there's more, you know, cooks in the kitchen kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I think the steady growth is, is, is important because you, you want to continue to grow and be more and more successful with it um, from that standpoint. So how important was it when you bought into it that Leo was staying part of the practice? Because once again, I've heard of people buying into a partnership and the business owner just wants to sell half of it so they can go and play golf Mm -hmm. and and holiday all the time and, and they don't really that was such a big part and influence over the business sure so was it important yeah, I mean, for you to make sure leo was still part and, and active it was yeah but you know luckily since he was he was young enough at the time you know and talking to him i knew that he wanted to continue to work and he didn't have any desire to you know step away other than you know a random vacation here or there yeah um so yeah that, that was important because you know you don't want to be a partner and pulling all the weight and all the money into the practice while your partner's not pulling his end, you know, his or her end. So I think that's important too. Okay. And when you went into partnership, was it right from the start, was it 50, 50 or did Leo have a majority share and you were uh, like a smaller partner? Yeah. Well, it was 51, 49. So he kept the, you know, the, the, 
higher number just obviously for the oh, final say, if you will. Um, so yeah, 51.49. Did that bother you at all that it was that way or you said, ah, it's fine? Yeah, no, I mean, they're like, you know, and maybe that's why we, we worked well together. And, you know, from my mindset, it was, there were certain concessions I was willing to give because in my mind, it was, it was the big picture, right? The big picture was the growth of the practice. So, you know, only getting 2% less in, in the big picture to me wasn't going to be an end of the world. And, you know, the YouTube thing that we had discussed before, yeah. all the, all the money that came in from that contractually that when we became a partner went to Leo. So I didn't see any of that money and it wasn't a lot of money, but you know, it might've been a thousand dollars a month. Right. Um, but for me, again, my mindset was, do I fight to try to get $500 or do I just know that I'm working with a big marketing tool that's free, that's going to bring in more patients for me to see where my bottom line is going to go up. And that was kind of the mindset that I went with it. It wasn't worth fighting over, extra you know money here when i knew in the big picture was it was going to help me so because i remember when i had you back on episode 21 and we were talking about youtube Mm -hmm. uh and you said that was it was a really good marketing tool for your business right so you've that and that's why you're continuing continuing going well you wouldn't let it go because you're getting hundreds of thousands of views uh, (laughs) when you do a video exactly Exactly. yeah yeah it's it's a great marketing tool you know i would say now you know it's maybe two to three thousand dollars a month is what it brings in so i mean it's not like it's a couple hundred bucks it's a decent chunk of money um and some of it's just because it's not all monetized because you know youtube certain aspects of it they don't want to monetize because of the gore or whatever yeah um but you know like i said it's a huge the amount of patients that come in from seeing it was enough for me to not say well i'm going to worry about that money getting it from youtube basically so and when you're saying you're getting you know like i say a couple of grand a month is it is that through referrals or is that actually through YouTube? No, that's from Google. So oh, Google, from Google yes. yeah, yeah. But then that doesn't include obviously the patients that come in and say, "Hey, I saw your YouTube video," or "I saw you on Instagram," or wherever. Um, you know, that doesn't include that because that's a that's probably even more than that, honestly, because we get a big chunk of it. No, I think it's fantastic. So before yeah. we wrap up, have you got any final final partnership advice? for anyone that's listening to this now um, that you want to share before we wrap up? Yeah, I think just going back to what I said, it's just, you know, you want to be happy with what you do. I don't think there's anything wrong with being a high paid associate, but at the same token, if your goal and dream is to be a, an owner, then then go for it. And, you know, just make sure you know who you're getting in bed with, so to say, right? Because it's, it's going to be, you want it to last for a long term and, you know, be reasonable and realistic and be open to making a concession here or there and seeing the big picture because the big picture is what counts. It's not the immediate right now, you know, the, the big picture is what's important. So yeah, sometimes it's important to step back and look at that um, because that, that will maybe ease your mind about certain concessions that you have to give or you are giving up if you will. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And it's good advice too. So Todd, I want to thank you for once again, coming on the Podiatry Legends podcast of course. Of course. Um, and and actually sharing part of the story about you know, how you got on the partnership and also talking uh, a little bit about Leo as well. It's, um, like I said, it was a shock to everybody, I think, yeah, when he passed away. And I don't think there would have been anyone that knew him who wouldn't uh, have his smile etched in their head. Right. Because exactly. uh, <laughs> he, exactly. he had one of the biggest grins I think you'd ever want to see. Uh, mm-hmm. He looked like the Cheshire cat, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he did. Yeah, my mom actually made him a mask with the Cheshire cat's smile on it. Yeah, well, I actually think his smile was bigger. Yeah, it probably was. You're right. Yeah, yeah. His <laughs> smile was that big and made the Cheshire cat look sad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Todd, thank you very much for coming on again. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm just going to stop the recording. Wherever it is, there we go.